Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game What's on the Menu by Rolling Point Games. It plays two to six players, takes roughly about 45 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game What's on the Menu, you are going to be a chef trying to create your own individual menu. Be utilizing your player board or menu and <laughs> opening it up and placing down appetizers, soups, salads, beverages, entrees, sides, desserts, and so on and so forth. On uh, your turn, you're basically going to be gathering either a menu card from the available menu options in the area here, or you're going to be taking an action card, which you can then utilize based on when the action card says you can, and there are five different types of action cards. Uh, after you have gathered one of those items, you're going to then move to the plating phase, and then you're going to be able to put down one or two menu items onto your menu, or you're going to play two action cards, or you can play one menu item and one action card. After you have done so, you're going to move to the next phase of the prep, pass the first player marker, and keep going, placing down menu items, attempting to have the most points at the end of the game in what's on the menu. Let's take a look at how to set the game up, and then of course how to play. It's easy to set up a game of what's on the menu. First, give every player a menu, or a player board that they can use by placing it right in front of them. Take the main board of the game and place it within reach of all players. Shuffle the menu and action cards and place them in the spots available on the main game board. Then go ahead and take the salt or pepper shaker and place it on around one of the prep phase of the game. Additionally, you'll have the chef's hat. Go ahead and pass this to one of the players. That player will be going first uh, at the beginning of the game. Lastly, but not least, you're going to go ahead and deal out two menu cards for each player and make sure that they are dealt these cards secretly into their hand. After that, the setup is complete and you're ready to go. Playing the game is very simple. After the setup, go ahead and make sure that you have the prep phase set up. You're going to deal out cards onto the main game board based on the number of players. And if we're playing a three or four player game, we will have five menu items out from the main deck. And of course, the player with the top hat is the player who will get to go first. On the prep phase, the first player will start by selecting one of two actions. A, select one of the menu items and place it face down into their hand of cards. The total amount of menu items you have in your hand is five. If they do not want to take one of these menu items and put it into their hand, they can instead take an action card from the action deck and put that card into their hand. There are five types of action cards, and they're going to be played based on the type of card that they are. Main important one is the red one. If you draw that, it must be played instantaneously upon being drawn. After the main player, the first player with that top hat goes, every single player will additionally get an opportunity to take one of the actions, choosing one of these guys here or drawing one of these guys here. Once everybody has done so, the prep phase is concluded and the plate phase will begin for the first round, in which case players will be able to A, play two menu items face down onto their board, provided they follow the matching requirements. You can't play a dessert on a beverage or a beverage on a side or an entree on a soup. So if you get something like a hot fudge sundae, which is a dessert, you'd have to put it down onto my des their dessert area. You can place two menu items up to two, or you can play up to two action cards. The last thing you can do is you can play one menu and one action card. But remember that you must follow the rules for placement when it comes to menu items, and you must follow the rules of playing action cards when it comes to the type of card that it is. Some of them are modifiers that you can place face down onto your board. Others can be played on other players' boards. Some of them are reactionary, and others are instantaneously used when drawn. Once all players have either placed two played two, or one of each, then the round will end and you'll move to the prep phase. When the prep phase happens, you will take all of the currently non-used item cards, you will flip them over, or menu cards, and put them into the trash can. And then, once again, you'll flip over the deck and place out new items that players are then going to be able to achieve. You're going to pass on the first player marker to the next player on the left, and the game will pr 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 you know, continue in that way. What's going to end up happening is you're going to go through rounds one, two, three, four, five, and then finally six. And when you hit six, every single menu card in the trash can will be removed from the game because there are cards in the action deck that will let you gather them or use them in some way. So the trash gets taken out in round six and in round 12. Otherwise though, that's basically how you play the game. You're going to be taking these guys, putting them into your hand, and then placing them down onto your board or playing action cards on your opponents. Once the game gets to the fifth round, uh, 15th round, 
and it finishes the plate phase, all the cards that are on your player board are going to flip over, revealing themselves. Because remember, you cannot look at them once you've placed them, nor can anybody else, but they can be messed with with action cards. And uh, once you reveal them, you're going to count all of the stars on all of your cards, as well as any modifiers and any bonuses, and add them up. And the player who has the most stars is the winner of the game. What's on the menu is kind of a card placement, card management, memory game, along with a bit of a take that game. You're trying to create the perfect menu by placing down cards face down onto your menu board, thusly not allowing yourself nor any of your opponents to see what you're putting down, and attempting to combo the cards based on memory. Did I put down the chili mac and cheese? Because if I did, then I can include this extra cheese or maybe cheesy gorditas or whatever, and maybe they can combo with each other. Or there's beverages that are going to give you bonuses based on the type of uh, entrees and appetizers and whatnot that you place down on the board. And your objective is just to score as many stars as possible. Yes, the coveted three-star piece pieces are very useful, but uh, gathering these two stars and even the one stars will not hurt you if you're able to combo them with other cards in the menu card deck. And you're going to be able to utilize those throughout the game. There's only a total of 15 rounds, which means the most amount of menu cards that you can get is 15 plus the two you start with, and you need to fill up eight spaces on your board. So you're going to have to kind of make choices. Do I want a menu item now? Do I want an action card that could help me get a better menu item? And uh, as time runs down, you're going to start having to make quick decisions that you're going to have to choose because once you've placed a menu item down onto your board it's locked there unless a card says otherwise and also you will not be able to peek at them so you have to kind of gauge when to place them and how to place them in order to score the points that you need in order to win. In, in essence, this game is very, very simple. You're basically just taking a card and then putting down cards or playing cards. Uh, but where it comes uh, tricky is based on what you played, what your opponents played, and uh, trying to gauge where you're going to be in uh, the rounds following up to the very end of the game. You have to have set yourself up pretty well and avoided your opponents from messing with you as much as you possibly can. There are cards that you can counter other cards with. There are cards that let you dig into the trash can. Uh, cards that will you draw the top cards of the menu card deck as opposed to taking ones out here. If you're the last person to go in the game, you're less likely to get a good menu item, so you might want to dig into the action card deck. And these cards can be very useful to you, provide quite a bit of benefit, and they can also do almost nothing. Sometimes when the trash is dumped and I draw a card that lets me dig into the trash for an item, it's something I'll have to save for later in order to utilize to hopefully benefit me. But remember, most of the trash cards are cards that people do not want anyway, so you kind of have to weigh what type of combos that you can make that your opponents cannot make. It's like a wombo combo game mixed with a bit of take that and management. The most interesting thing about this game, in my opinion, is the fact that you place your menu cards face down, and you don't know what they are if you can't remember Remember them, which for me, I'm like, I didn't remember the very specific ones I wanted to. Uh, there's a lot of menu items like beverages specifically that will combo with your entire board. And if you place all one star menu items uh, and you also place like this specific type of cocktail, you can score like anywhere up to eight points, which can increase your um, score by double, which is very, very powerful. And the action cards are very simple to use and understand. And they're also color coded, which is almost not even needed based on how they are written. Uh, one minor thing I would say about the game is I love the artwork, uh, but I really wish that there was a different font or style that's used for the cards here. It's, they're a little bit harder to read than I would like, and I'm just not a big fan of the font. However, like I said, I do really, really enjoy the artwork for the game. I love the player boards. I love the menu items. It does feel like I am making a very specific type of menu that players can then order off of kind of a thing, and the theme works exceptionally well for me. Uh, yes, yeah, so a huge fan of the artwork. Just I wish a little bit of of the, the details on the bottom of the cards were done a little better. But as far as the symbolism goes, the artwork goes, and what it is what it is, and how it's stated is, is, is really, really, really good. Uh, really works very well for me. Uh, some of the action cards are definitely better than others, and some of them are situational. Uh, sometimes you'll want to use them, other times you won't use them throughout the entire game. It's just kind of a chance thing as to what you're going to get in the action card deck. The game is very take that. It's very likely that you're going to punch and be punched back in this game. You might have to swap one of your items with somebody else's 
item, you might end up getting something terrible like a sausage salad and uh, that you might, they might take away, oh here's a hot dog salad, and they might take away something like your chicken noodle soup which scores you three points and give you something that scores you uh, zero. Um, that being said though, this is a fun little game. This is a game that works very well for families, it's very easy to understand, and it provides a little bit of complexity that you wouldn't think would be associated with it based on the fact that cards are face down, trying to remember what other players played, how they're trying to combo. If you want to hate draft off another player, which is basically taking cards that they want, uh, that you might not even be able to use, but thusly preventing them to score from scoring points, because at the end of the game you can also lose points by not putting down certain menu items on the board, because everything is optional, or sorry, nothing is optional except for the second beverage. Everything must be played down or you lose points, and if you place them in a generally wrong area, you will lose points as well in the game. So you're trying to do your best to create the most perfect menu possible. And uh, as far as that all goes, it works great. So yes, theming, style, mechanics, all of that's great. If you don't mind a game that's a little bit uh, cutthroat, a little bit aggressive, you don't mind a game that has a little bit of memory in it, and if you don't mind a game that's about food and creating menu items, and this is something I would suggest picking up. It plays a lot of players, and it works just fine with two, three, four, five, and six players. I enjoyed it thoroughly throughout up to, I believe, five players I played it, and I just imagine that six players would work just the same. I suppose uh, with the different player groups between three and four and five and six, they'll have less options based on the higher number of players. Like for instance, with four players, five menu items, less options for the fourth player. With six players at six menu items, less options for the sixth player when it comes to menu items. You're most likely going to go through the entire menu deck, which is nice, so you have to see almost all of the cards through all 15 rounds of the game. If you're looking for the game, to pick it up, there's a link down below in the description where you can check out what's on the menu. A solid little fun family game about chefs. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game What's on the Menu. If you like this game, go ahead and check out the link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick it up on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have a giveaway we're wearing right now, and we will have one next week as well. Hit that like button, comment, and of course, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out, and we do greatly appreciate when you do. Patreon for a dollar. If you would like to support more of our content and our live streams would happen every Sunday, Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Finally, Moonshell, most of your backers should be getting this stuff by now. There's only a few of you guys left before we finish this update uh, to notify you guys that all the games have been shipped out. And uh, for people who do not have it yet, for some reason, we can give you that tracking information, whatever it is that you need. Regardless though, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to creating a menu with you next time.